Good afternoon, everyone. Shortly after 10 p.m. last night, a 6.8 earthquake offshore Taiwan. I was online, so I jumped over to see what the magnitude was, felt the shakes here in Taipei a little bit, but there's so much variation amongst the magnitude. World Data Center in Beijing put it at 6.2. China Earthquake Network Center put it at 6.1. And sure enough, right on cue, downgrade by the USGS and Japan along with the EMSC, it seems to be a concerted effort to downgrade all the earthquakes planet-wide currently. And a quick Google search will definitely bring up solar cycles related to earthquakes, explosive silica eruptions due to cosmic ray increases through Japan. You'll notice at the bottom of the trough of the solar cycle, also a lot of eruptions and earthquakes occur. Going forward, an increase in major earthquakes and volcanism is what you can expect. Let's run down where it's going to shake and where it shook most during the Dalton and the Maunder Minimum. Anytime there's an earthquake felt across Taiwan, you can jump right over to the Central Weather Bureau. They have an earthquake listing within the database. This area northeast of Taiwan is a common area for earthquakes offshore. CWB as well, keeping it at 6.8 even today. They did not downgrade. World Data Center during the same time in Beijing pegged it at a 6.2. Newswire on Shanghai Daily with the China Earthquake Network Center puts it at 6.1. As well as CCTV News broadcast keeps it at 6.1, but the USGS routinely downgrades it to the next level below in magnitude. The downgrading is continuous through the USGS, but they are not alone. The Japan Meteorological Association continually downgrades quakes, as well as the EMSC. It seems to be a concerted effort. This is just a single example here. From a 5.1 to a 4.8, they always try to bring it down that next level. So even if you're trying to correlate data, it doesn't show the increases globally in the amount of earthquakes by magnitude. There's a plethora of research on solar cycles associated with earthquakes. Lots of peer reviewed papers have been published on this. I was lucky enough to find one with the characteristics of earthquake events during the Maunder Minimum. It's showing the geological features, the plates, and their percentage of the entire plate that had an earthquake during that time. So we look at the Southeast Pacific which includes Peru, Ecuador, and Chile, it means during the Maunder Minimum, 77% of that plate experienced movement in earthquakes during that time from 1645 to 1720. As well, we can do the same thing with the Dalton Minimum from 1790 to 1820. When you're looking for the largest rumbling that will occur during a grand solar minimum, you're looking at the Arabian Plate. So 90% of that plate experienced earthquake activity during the Dalton Minimum. So if we are going to match up cycles, you might want to start looking for earthquakes in these exact spots. I'll take this chart with a grain of salt because the USGS continually downgrades their earthquake magnitude, but you can still get a comparison idea on the number of quakes that have increased over the last 10 years. Now going back in history, everywhere you see a dip in the blue below line, take a look at the volcanic eruptions that occurred. Going back 2,400 years, you'll routinely see explosivity index above 6 during grand solar minimums. Other papers also are linking cosmic ray increases to silica violent explosive eruptions. From March 2015 to January 2016, definite increases in cosmic rays as the magnetosphere in the sun decreases, affecting our Earth's magnetosphere, also decreasing, allowing more cosmic rays to penetrate the atmosphere, which induces cloud formation around 15 to 18,000 feet. Spensmark is the master of this. You need to watch this movie the cloud mystery you can find it online for free it shows the correlation between increased cloud cover 
and grand solar minimums. University of Delaware comes up with the same conclusions. Cosmic ray increases during every grand solar minimum. Two ice flows puts together one of the best volcanic eruption strength history profiles from 1600 to the present. And if we're looking at repeating cycles, you should start to see eruptions in either the 150 year range, which would be the Dalton minimum matchup or something further back in time, 400, 800 years ago on this 400 year cyclical pattern. Mount Hakone erupts for the first time in 800 years in Japan. Look for an eruption on Mount Fuji. This will be in the 300 year time frame. Volcanoes erupting for the first time in 400 years in Indonesia. Costa Rica, biggest in 150 years. Nicaragua, 110 year timeline. And you'll start to see again and again at the bottom of the trough, there seem to be great earthquakes as well as volcanic eruptions. Interestingly enough, after the peak leading up to the grand solar minimum, when it's at the bottom trough of the minimum, it seems that these earthquake and volcanic activity subsides. It seems to be a release mechanism from the heat into the cold. Looking for other signs, we start to see holes forming in the Arctic ice from volcanoes erupting under the sea ice. That is a gigantic gap in the ice due to volcanic activity. The Gakkel Ridge, a chain of underwater volcanoes 1800 kilometers long, spewing massive amounts of heat into the underlying oceans. That would also explain why some of the ice was thinner in the last five to 10 years, but is now starting to recover. If you look in the center left, you'll see this kind of purple striation. It's exactly where the volcanic activity is occurring in the Arctic. Here's a side profile so you can see what it would look like with the heat reaching the surface. Better map for you here so you can really see the contours. I routinely have people write into my comment page asking me what will happen in the future. Here's a breakdown. I've linked everything below so you can go chase these sources further. But one thing that stood out was an increase in major earthquakes and volcanism along with great changes in the temperate zones with simultaneous warm and cool mixing areas, undulating jet stream, all these things that are happening today. We see it happen through history again and again. It's a cycle. It's a pattern. It's repeating. Hope you got something out of the video. I just wanted to share with my experience last night and where my mind went after the earthquake with the downgrade from the USGS.